again we come before thee in thanksgiving we come before you thankful that the Lord has allowed us to see another day we realize that in the past few months that we have been isolated we have not been able to maybe go into our favorite salon and we have not been able to go to many places that we have, we are used to going we have not been able to even worship together inside of the church but there's one thing that we can do and that is we can get into the word of God so we are asking and encouraging everyone that on Wednesday afternoon at 6 30 if you want to you can dial in to the number that's shown and join us as we study the word of God in our Bible studies we are studying the book of Exodus the 21st chapter and all are welcome to join us it goes without saying we also would like to thank those that assist us in bringing these services our worship team sister twigs who was who has been with us and is faithful in her duty we are so thankful that the Lord has given her the drive to to run on to see what the end's going to be in. I'm so thankful for my wife who has stood by my side and assists in bringing these services to you, my daughter and all those, and the people of St. Paul's Church who are so willingly given their time. We are so thankful. So we ask that you would take time out to, to either join us in these services or join us in Bible study. And on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock, we will be starting our Sunday school at 9 o'clock at the same dial-in number and the same access code. Join us and let us get into the Word of God. And we pray that God's Word would get in to us. The Old Testament reading is taken from Amos chapter 8, the 4th through the 12th verse. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephraim small and the shackle great, and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuge for the wheat. The Lord hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up wholly as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day and I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation and I will bring up sackcloth upon all lines and boldness upon every head and I will make it as the morning of an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day behold the days come saith the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, we hear your word that came forth in Amos. Lord, we hear your word when you say that you will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, not a famine for thirst of water. But Lord, you said that we will be looking for your word and God, but it will be hearing the words of the Lord that we will long for. Father God, we are here at that point now. And we are asking you to just feed us, Lord, with your word through whatever means that you have to do it, God. Lord, if it means feeding us over the media, we say thank you. God, if it means feeding one to another, brother to sister, sister to brother, God, we thank you, Father, for your word. Lord, we know it's only your word that's going to take us through, God, no matter what may come. Oh, God, if it's a famine, Lord, if it's a virus, whatever it is, God, if it's lack in our lives, Lord, we know only you and your word will take us through. God, we thank you for this word. We thank you, God, and we hope that it penetrates someone's heart that they will hear what you have said in Amos, God. Oh, Father, we don't want to thirst for your word. We don't want to be in a famine in a bad way for your word. But, Father, we want to be humble. We want to be obedient and seek your word, Lord. Oh, Father, will you just open up our hearts and minds. Oh, so much hatred, God. Oh, where are the kind words for each other, God? Oh, Father God, what you have taught us about love, God, unconditionally, Lord. Where is it, Lord? Oh, we have gone too far down this road. Oh, Father, help us to get back. Help us to find our way back to you, Father, as the prodigal son did, God. Oh, Lord, we are crying out to you, Lord. We are crying out like we've never cried out before. Lord, there are some that are sick, God. There are some in lack, Father God. There are some in need, God, of just a kind word, Lord. Yeah. They have been in isolation and in, in quarantine, God. And all they need is to hear a kind word. Father, we are your hands. We are your feet, God. Why is it we can't find our way to each other? Yeah. Oh, Father yeah. God, there are some in prison still crying out, Lord. Why is it that we cannot walk in, Father, and say to each of them, there is a way? Why is it that we can't feed the poor? Why is it that we can't take a moment to pray for those whose, whose brows are wrinkled with thoughts of how they're going to make it through? Yes. We don't know, Father, but we know that you have the answer. Yes. And I thank you, God, that you're feeding us, Lord, that you have taken us through this, God, yes. so that we may learn where we need to be in you. Yes. Oh, Father, remember those families who are going through, God, making decisions for their children, God, making decisions that they may not know how they're going to come out of, but they're trying and trying and trying, God, to do your will and to do what you've asked us to do. Father, bring up a hedge of protection around our children and upon that doorpost where these their children re reside, God. All oh, your blood be upon the doorpost, God. Protection, God, we ask in the name of Jesus. Lord, remember this government, God. Oh, Father, all I'm going to say is you've got it. You've got it, God. And we give it to you without even thinking about it and taking it back. For you're the same God that took care of us today, God. You took care of us yesterday. So, Lord, we don't have any problems with trusting you with tomorrow. We know you're going to bring us through. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, God. Remember those here at St. Paul, Lord. Remember from the leader, God, on down to me, Father, and down to the other members of the church and the offices, God. Will you just envelop us and keep us, Lord, steadfast in the way. Don't let us get tired. Don't let us get weary, God. Oh, build us up in every way that we can or every way that we should be, God. Only for your glory. Yes. Not for us, Lord, yes. but for your glory. Yes. Your glory, God. Oh, give us a new founded promise to move forward, God. Yes. For you've already taken care of every promise you've given us. So give us a new, God, a new finding so that we may go forward in the way that we should, God, trusting and believing in you, Father God. Yes. For you have never left us, 
and you have not forsaken us, God. And we thank you. We thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Father. We don't mind praising you, God. And we say thank you this day, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All these blessings we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our New Testament scripture reading will be taken from John, the seventh chapter, beginning at the 37th verse. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said, That Christ cometh of the seed of David, and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus says unto them, He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our Lord judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? They answer and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look. For out of Galilee arises no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. This is the word of the Lord. Right by my side. 
themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord and the Lord said unto Satan from whence cometh thou and Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it and the Lord said unto Satan hast thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou knowest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sores, boils, from the sole of his foot, unto his crown and he took him a pot share 
to scrape himself withal. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speaketh as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. What subject we would like to use? Don't let go of your integrity. Don't let go of your integrity. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before thee thanking you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. And Father, we come, Lord, asking, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord God, that you would, Lord, just allow us to worship you, Lord, to clear our minds and to worship you, Lord. We ask, Lord God, that you would allow us, Heavenly Father God, to get into your word. We ask you right now, Heavenly Father God, that I am asking you that you speak to me and speak through me. Lord God, that you would just fill me, Lord, Lord with, with your words, Lord. Lord God, just clear my heart, clear my mind, Lord God. Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus. I dare not come in my name, but in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Speak to us right now, Lord. Speak to us now, Lord. Father God, give us a word from heaven, Lord. Help us, Lord God. Strengthen us, Lord God. Through your word, Lord God. Let your word flow right now, Lord. Let your word speak to somebody, Lord. Where they are, let your word speak to them right now, Lord. Someone needs to be confident. Let your word speak to them, Lord. Someone may be discouraged. Let your word speak to them right now, Lord. Father, I ask that you would use your servant. Any way you see fit, use me, Lord. And Father God, we will, we will ever, Lord, praise you. We will ever give you the honor. We will ever give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Don't let go of your integrity. You know, I realize that we hear a lot about Job. I would imagine that Job is probably one of the most prolific characters in the Bible. One of the most talked about and preached about person in the Bible. We particularly know Job for his patience. And I believe that all the people in the Bible, Job has to be one of the most patient men in the Bible. But Job is not only known for his patience. I, I would just like to talk a little bit about Job's integrity. Because we do know that all that had happened to Job. Job was not only a patient man, but he is a man of integrity. A man of integrity. Well, you ask yourself the question then. First of all, let's talk about integrity and let's define integrity. We find that integrity is defined as having a steadfast adherence to a strict moral or religious code. We find that again all that has happened to Job in, in the second chapter of the book of Job. We find that this is Job's second 
test. Oh, uh, we do know that Satan had presented himself to the Lord. And the Lord asked Satan, have you considered my servant Job? In other words, the Lord is asking Satan, have you looked at Job? In other words, the Lord is, is somewhat bragging on his servant Job. And even in this first verse, we find these words. Again, there was a day. So, just from the mere fact of hearing that word again, that the sons of God, the angels were, had appeared before God again, Satan appeared before the Lord. Which also tells us that even in this second test of Job, how many of you know that Satan is persistent? Not only that he did all he could to Job in the first chapter, that he allowed and caused Job to, to, to lose his wealth, that he, that he allowed and caused Job. He took away his children, took away everything that the man had, but that wasn't enough. So the Bible said, again, which shows us the persistence of Satan. You know, somebody said that Satan just won't leave me alone. He just won't leave me alone. The reason why he won't leave you alone is because his ultimate goal is to kill, steal, and destroy. Satan doesn't want to save us. He wants to destroy us. And he will not settle. He will not rest until he's completed his task. Well, the Bible tells us that the Lord basically allowed uh, Satan. And notice what God said. God said, you can do what you want to with him, but don't touch his soul. In other words, save him. Or which also tells me that Satan can't do anything to us unless the Lord allows him to do it. We also note <laughs> that Satan told God, you have a hedge of protection around Job. And I want you to understand something. God didn't remove the hedge from around Job. He just lowered it enough for Satan to get in. Oh, how many of you know that there's a hedge of protection around you? Well, I want you to understand there is a hedge of protection around you. You see, the reason why Satan can't carry his plan out on you is because there's a hedge of protection around you. The reason why things were supposed to happen and didn't happen is because there's a hedge of protection around you. Well, the old folks used to sing a song that says, Jesus built a fence all around me. So the Lord allowed. And notice I said he didn't cause it, but he allowed. He allowed Satan to attack Job. But it's also interesting to note one of the first things that the Lord said to Satan is that all that you have done, all that you've done to Job, I want you to notice he still has his integrity. He still has his integrity. Oh, isn't it good to know that things can happen to us, but we can still maintain our integrity? Isn't it good to know that sin cannot take away your integrity? But the Lord said, he still, he still has his integrity. Even though I have lowered the hedge of protection around him. Even though you've taken away this man's children. Even though you've taken away all that he owns. Even though you've done all these things to him. Yet still, he 
he still has his integrity. Oh, let me tell you why I say that, church. Because you see, someone has lost their job, but they still have their integrity. Someone out there, maybe you've lost a loved one, but you still have your integrity. Someone out there, maybe you're behind in their rent, maybe you're behind in your bill, but yet still, you still have your integrity. Still got my integrity. Job maintained his integrity. But how many of you know <laughs> Satan wasn't through with Job yet? So here's what Satan told the Lord. He said, skin for skin. Oh, let, let me let me let me explain that for a second. What Satan said, skin for skin. In other words, I attacked Job indirectly. But if you allow me to attack him directly, I guarantee I can get him to curse you to your face. You see, see, the thinking is, I attacked his children. I took away his children. I took away his wealth. But I have a directly attacked. Job. And, 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 and Lord, if you allow me to attack Job, if you allow me to, to cause him some pain, I guarantee you, I'll make him curse you to your face. So the Lord says, do what you will with him. Well, the Bible tells us that Satan afflicted Job. He afflicted him. Job had sores. You know the story. He had sores from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Now, we must understand something, church. This man was in agony. He was in agony. You see, it's easy to say that, you know, if it was me, I would have hold on. But let's understand something. This man was in agony. Intense pain. Imagine, if you will, your skin peeling. Imagine, if you will, that, that, there's, that there's pus oozing from your skin. Imagine, if you will, this man losing weight. Imagine, if you will, having fever. Imagine, if you will, being depressed. Imagine, if you will, not being able to sleep. Imagine, if you will, having nightmares. Imagine, if you will, having difficulty breathing. Imagine, if you will, your, your, your eyesight's are failing. Imagine, if you will, that your, your teeth are rotting. Imagine, if you will, itchy, scratching, sores all over your body. See, we're not just talking about it. A couple hours sickness here. We're not talking about a couple days sickness here. But imagine, if you will, going through this intense pain. You see, the one question that most people would ask is, Lord, why has thou forsaken me? I serve you to the best of my ability. I've done everything that you wanted me to do, but yet still, Lord, I'm in pain and I need you. Yes, yes. Why, Lord? You see, that's the one question we ask. Oh, Lord, tell me why. Mm -hmm. Tell me why, Lord. Mm -hmm. Why have you turned your back on me? But I want you to see Job's attitude. Yes. And if you look at the 21st verse, Excuse me, the 21st verse in the first chapter. Here's what Job says. Job says, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return to them. The Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Notice what Job said. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. We have to understand what that means. I will bless the Lord at 
all times. Not sometimes, but all times. Yes, yes. I'll bless them when I, when, when I don't feel well. Mm -hmm. I'll bless them when I feel well. I'll bless them in the city. I'll bless them in the field. I'll bless them no matter what's going on in my life. I'll bless them no matter what the circumstance. I'll bless them. Yes, Lord. Yes. Job said, Blessed. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This man went through intense pain. Intense pain, church. Intense pain. He was in agony. But yet he held on to his integrity. We must understand that people lose their integrity with far less things happening to them. Someone makes us angry. <laughs> we want to lose our integrity. Someone talk about us. We're ready to lose our integrity. But this man held on. He held on. Yes, Lord. All that happened to him. He held on. Don't you know? Satan gave him his best shot. He gave him his best shot cause sickness cause sickness on Job but that wasn't enough to cause Job to curse his God and I want you to understand and see something else in this do you not know Satan will use others to get to us you see the Bible tells us that he used Job's wife. Now I know oftentimes we, we tend to want to beat up on Job's wife because she told him, why don't you curse God and die? But you must understand something. This woman was hurting. She lost her kids just like Job did. She lost everything she had just like Job did. See, the only difference is Satan got to her. Satan got to her. Oh, don't ever say what you wouldn't do and what you would do until it happens to you. See, that's the reason we have to be prayed up. She came to Job and said, curse God and die. In other words, maybe that might have been a, a hint of sympathy in her voice. Look at you. I hate to see you go through this. Why don't you end it all? I hate to see you suffer. Go ahead and curse God and die. Get it over with. But you see, the mindset of Job is, if I give in, I will be losing my integrity. If I curse God, I'll be losing my integrity. Notice what Job said. All that the Lord has given me, God gave it to me. He has the right to give it and he has the right to take it away. Yes, Lord. Yes. The very life, my very life belongs to God. Yes. Job said, I can't give up now. I can imagine. I can't give up now. Oh, how many of you out there believe that you can't give up now? Come too far to give up now. Look at where the Lord has brought me from. See, that's faith. That is faith. And old man Job even declared, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Oh, all that means is I'm going to trust him as long as I live. To my grave, I will trust him. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. I'm not going to lose my integrity. I can't give up now. I'm saying to you, church, we cannot give up now. God has brought us too far. What I guarantee you, he's brought us this far and we can't leave him. 
Don't lose your integrity. Don't lose your integrity. Even though trials may come on every hand, don't lose your integrity. Sometimes we are, we are tossed and driven, but don't lose your integrity. Don't lose your integrity. You see, it's notable in the Bible that others have also, others had to go through storms. Notice what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 7th through the 9th verse. Hear what Paul said. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of of the revelation. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Notice the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Paul said, but this thing, he said, I besought the Lord not once, not twice, but three times have I besought the Lord that this affliction might depart from me. And, he's, and the Lord said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for thy strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for thee. Yes, Lord. My grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. My grace is sufficient. Mm How many of you know that God's grace is sufficient? Yes, Lord. Yes. It is sufficient. We may not have everything we want, but His grace is sufficient. Yes. Yes. During this pandemic, people have lost. As I said earlier, they've lost jobs. lost their freedom. We see people that are standing in the line to get food. The Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, I got what you need. I, I am more than enough. See, this is what Job stood on. This is what Paul stood on. My grace is sufficient for you. And I'm saying to your church, we ought to stand on that same grace. Yes, yes. The Lord. Understand that the Lord did not leave Job. Job did not leave the, the Lord. Held on to his integrity. Yes. Well, I'm going to ask you what will you hold on to? Or what are you holding on to? When husband walk out, when wife walk out, what are you holding on to when money is gone? What are you holding on to when your child is gone? What? Will you hold on to when your health fails you? What will you hold on to when you have more, 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 more bills than bucks? What will you hold on to? What will you hold on to when there's division? See, we can't lower ourselves to do what others do. What will you hold on to? All that happened to Job, Job did not let go of his integrity. I know that my God will take care of me. Well, Job said, I may be going through it right now, but he said, I'm going through my trial, I'm going through my test. But the one thing Job said in the later chapters of this book, he said, I will come through as pure gold. Yes, yes, he did. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, my church, my folks, we have, we, are, we are going through trials. We've been tried. You ever been tried? And the Lord has brought you out. You can say, I've come through as pure gold. lost my integrity I haven't lost it but I'm waiting on the Lord I'm waiting on the Lord these things are only temporary but I'm waiting on the Lord and if the Lord never brings us out of this that's all right I'm still gonna wait on him yes, yes. oh I feel Job coming on here I'm gonna still wait on the Lord Come what will, come with me. No matter what Satan throws at me, no matter what he does to me, I'm going to hold on and I'm going to hold out. See, we need to have this attitude. Wait. Wait upon the Lord and be of good courage. Yes. Wait. Or even if you even if you have to be like old Jacob. You remember how Jacob held on to the angel. Jacob said, I, I, I'm gonna hold on and I'm not gonna let go until you bless me. Yes. Yes. You see, sometimes, church, we gotta hold on for our blessing. Hold on and don't let go. Job did not let go of his, of his integrity. Through it all. Through it all. Even from, even when the people closest to him, his wife, his friends, all came to Job, it says, you might as well give up. You might as well throw in the towel, Joe. You must have done something wrong. But you know what? The Bible never states that Job did anything wrong. Which tells me that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. You see, we have to understand that every day is not going to be Sunday. Simply because we serve the Lord, that does not mean we are exempted from troubles. But as long as I live, while trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Hold on. Don't let go of your integrity. When folks come at you, hold on to your integrity. Yes, yeah. When you are assaulted, us insulted, hold on to your integrity. When things, when they, when they don't look right, when they don't feel right, when you're not feeling good, hold on to your integrity. Yes, yes, Lord. Hold on. As Job did. We encourage you. We encourage you, don't let go of your integrity, no matter what comes. We pray that the word of God will encourage you, yes. that the word of God may comfort you, yes. that we continue to hold on.